Hi, this is Stella. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, today I want to talk about um, writing your own craft book and having it published. And yes, you can do it. Okay. From my research and personal experience, I've found three basic forms of publishing a book. First is the standard publisher that novelists go to. Um, this can cost you thousands of dollars, months and months of waiting as your manuscript is proofed and tweaked by their professionals and you have to send them all the items you have made for the book so they can be photographed etc. A long process, I mean it would be wonderful if one could afford it and you would hope and pray you would get your initial money back. Okay, and your book then would be available at all bookstores, libraries, etc. And some publishers give you several copies for yourself. Usually they require a letter or an email of reintroduction. After you've been to their website and checked out all of the conditions for them accepting your proposal for your book, you may have to go to one publisher after another and get knocked back. They are very experienced and professional in their field and know exactly what their readers will want. But who knows? If you will ever make your initial capital back in sales, who knows? That's the unknown. Secondly, there is self-publishing. This is the avenue I have personal experience with. This sort of publishing is also called print on demand. I've used Kindle Direct Publishing with Amazon for my publishing and selling of my books. I'm just going to pull over some of my books. Now, aren't these beautifully bound? Absolutely beautiful. This was a proof copy, as you can see, it's got proof on the back. And this I ordered to make sure that everything was as it should be. And I found some bad printing there, so I fixed that. This is another one, this is my stitching book. With These are all done by me. And my favourite dolls, volume, let's go with volume one. All patterns, which I have done. I've written out all my patterns. I've got um, photographs. Okay, let's move, move on. What I want to do is show you two sites for um, self-publishing. Okay, I'm going to swing the camera. Don't get seasick. Okay, this one is Kindle Direct Publishing. Now, because it's called Kindle Direct Publishing, doesn't mean it is solely for Kindle. It is most certainly not solely for Kindle. As you can see, there's my books I listed here. And they take you right through everything from start to finish. You can actually, um, let's, let's have a look and go to um, create a new title. Let's create a paperback. We'll just start. Here you would choose your language. 
your book title, subtitle, optional, and just basically follow. If this is the first book, don't worry about the series edition number, don't worry about that. Um, your name, first name and last name is usually just fine. And you need to describe what your book is all about. And if you own all your all your patterns, you own the copyright, click that. Choose some keywords for Amazon search. And then choose a category. And if this is for children under 18 years of age, just call, just what does it say? Does this book contain language situations or images inappropriate for children under 18 years of age? You would click no. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you right through this and do an example. And I'll show you my example. I'm creating a little bag book. Making little totes. And what I've done is I've written my patterns. I haven't photographed yet. And I've done all my diagrams. I've used some pretty papers for framing. Okay, let me set this aside for just a minute. I don't want to confuse you any more than I'm already confused. <laughs> okay. Just move my camera back down here a bit. Okay. Um, the print on demand means that the book is printed when an order is placed on Amazon. With this type of printing, you can get their professionals to help you, at a cost of course, but I don't think it's as expensive as um, regular mainstream publishing. Or you can do it all yourself with their online guides. Now this is what I have done. It is relatively easy. You create your book and the cover yourself for uploading to them. Okay, this Let's go on to the third option of your um, type of printing. This option is to print your pages out on your printer and bind them into a book yourself. Not, not a very professional way to go, but okay if you just want to put together something for family and friends to showcase your crafts. My first ever book was a stitchery book of my designs which I printed out and bound. It was simply black drawings with very few color photographs of some of the designs I made up. Not a book you would see on the shelf of a bookstore. So that was just for for personal, you know, keepsake, which you could sell at craft fairs, etc. For printing in this manner, you will need a good quality printer and inks, a laser printer is best, plus quality paper, cardstock for the front and back covers and a binding machine. Now I'm going to show you the binding machine. Okay, that's a type of machine and that's that's what it does. Kind of plastic or metal. So that's that's another way to go. Okay. Um, now you might ask why publish a book when YouTube can show people everything they need to know about any type of craft. This is true. 
YouTube is a fabulous, fantastic way to learn crafting of all sorts, but, and the but is huge, you don't get pattern pieces for a start. You can't make up that doll or bag without the pattern pieces to put it together. Electronic teaching and learning is awesome, there's no doubt about that. And the interaction with other crafters is invaluable. Not only in crafting, but in life lessons too, I think. But not only is the tactile sensation of leafing through a beautifully illustrated craft book satisfying and inspirational, it's yours to keep. Like those precious photos you keep on your phone, what if they were all lost? That's why I like photo albums. Again, the act of touching those precious memories is far more heartfelt than flicking through a phone. What if your computer dies or you can't afford to buy a new one? No internet, no YouTube, no craft lessons online. What's your option? You pick up that beautifully crafted book, be inspired and get on and create. The book is also a beautiful gift for someone special in your life. Okay, next I'd like to re um, talk about knowing your craft. There's no way you could write a good, informative, fun and helpful craft book if you don't know your craft. So if you want to write a book and you don't know which of your favourite crafts to write about and, and teach, and that's what craft, a craft book is for, teaching others what you know about your particular craft. Pick one that you know well, enjoy doing, and feel that you could show others how to do it well. I've been making country dolls for many years. Once I'd found my stride and my passion in 2003-2004, Dolls on Parade was born and I was designing my own dolls and selling my patterns at craft fairs and markets and I had an online website a year or so later. The more dolls I designed, the more comfortable I came with my, became with my craft until I was invited one day to submit a doll to a craft magazine. That led to many more submissions, then I decided I wanted to write a book. I had something to offer. I felt that I had something to offer. So, be sure you know what you're going to teach in your book. Your forte could be card making, box making, mini albums, quilts, Christmas decorations. There are so many and every one of us is good at something. So let's make it special. Okay, I'm going to go through some computer programs to use. I use Microsoft Publisher 2003 for all of my patterns and books. It's just something that I got used to back then and I don't want to change it just because there's an updated version there. I'm happy with it. So whatever program you are happy with, use it. This one allows me to manipulate graphics and text without fuss. I also use PSP7, which is PaintShop Pro, an old version which suits me very well. I have used it for years. It helps me with graphics photograph cropping, diagrams, etc. But use whatever program you're comfortable with. Now speaking of graphics, the graphics that I use to decorate my books, for instance, these, um, whoops, that little one there, this pretty one to finish off and decorate all my pages, those. I buy them from dollargraphicsdepot.com. Now I'll put the um, all relevant websites down below. My favorite designer in Dollar Graphics is Trina Walker. When I was writing my first book of patterns, I asked her permission to use her graphics to enhance my book. She gave it. Most of the graphics designers at Dollar Graphics will allow their graphics to be used, 
as long as you are making something different with the graphic and you give credit to the front of your book to the graphic designer they don't want you to sell a book of their designs you've got to incorporate it into your own designs anyway read the rules for each artist on dollar graphics site okay also you'll need a PDF program for changing your word or publisher document into PDF now I use dopdf.com and I will again link that down below okay I'm just going to show you what I can do in my going up to my computer and this is my publisher 2003 program now I designed the the cover just grab a few pages I've decorated it with some graphics from Trina Walker got some general instructions if you need to put general instructions do so then I've got a contents page and then I start with my photographs in this particular book I had all my photographs at the front that's up to you um, and then I start with my patterns all my written patterns and then I go on to the actual pattern pieces which I draw out in um, felt tip pens so I can get as many as possible on one page okay let's just go back down here see what else I can show you okay I'm starting another little book I've only done one photograph at this stage. Okay, let me just bring you back down and uh, up a tad. So I've made these little tote bags and I thought I'll put them into a little book. I have a friend who loves tote bags, so this would be a perfect gift for her. Okay, that's a little black stripey one, just made with um, stripes. And then I've done a little pouch, a little jewellery or treasure pouch, with some beads on the end. This little one, with an applique on the front. These are great for little people too. Okay, and this is a um, basic calico bag which has got some um, hexagon pattern on the front. And then there's a, a little person's library bag. With a nice strap that go over the shoulder. So I, I've got one, two, three, four, five. So I thought I'd put them into a little book. as a keepsake and I may put it up for sale you just never know okay so I'm going to use I'm going to take you to my um, one of my graphics programs which is called Sorry about the camera, it's just bleh. This is called Photo Pos Pro. P O S P R O. Again, I'll put the link down below. Okay, so first up, I've got my 
got my photograph there. And that, that's pretty plain. I've got a, a lace background on that. And my bag does pop out because of the colours. If it was a pale bag, I would change the background, definitely. Now what I'm going to do to enhance this photo, I am going to add a frame. Now look at all my options. Can you see all those? All those frames popping up. So I can choose whatever I want. I like that one. I'll go OK. There. That's beautiful. Now I go to resize and I make sure my resolution is 300 dpi. That is so important with your photographs. They must be at least 300 dpi, otherwise your book will not turn out as, as beautiful. Your pictures will be fuzzy. So now I'm going to save that. going to take you to my my little bag book okay now I want to add that photo so I'm going to insert my picture something fancy dancy. Normally I would go with a, a basic script like Bookman Old Style. I really like that for you know writing out the patterns. But I'm going to have something really really pretty. Let's see what I can find. Um I'm thinking of something a bit um, cursive and how about that? Oh, it's a bit small. So we'll make it larger. Strippy in black. How cool is that? That's lovely. And that is the front page for this um, this pattern. So my next page has actually got the pattern. and some diagrams. Now I use, if you look down here, if you can see it or not, down here on my taskbar, Paint Shop Pro, I use that for doing all my um, graphics. If you, if you're not, um, if you don't know how to do graphics with a program like this, do them by hand and then scan them up and use a really good um, Sharpie pen. Oops. Really good black Sharpie pen. I haven't got one on hand. And a ruler. I would do my um, graphics first with a um, sharp pencil very lightly 
And if you're happy with it and don't have to rub anything out, go over it again with the black Sharpie. You can use um, coloured pencils and felt tip pens to colour in anything like I have over here. These ones, I've, I've coloured the diagrams there. Again, I have used my Paint Shop program for those. If you're familiar with your graphics program, then it should be a breeze for you. But if you're not, it doesn't mean you can't do this. And then I like to add a little page at the back for my notes. If anybody wants to make notes or changes to a pattern, then they've got them there. Okay, what else can I show you? Um, let me just go up here. Okay, we've had a look at the Kindle Direct Publishing. We've had a look at the binding machine. Now let's have a look at lulu.com. I've had one book published by them, but I find them just a little bit more expensive than KDP. But I also found that their quality was just a tad better. So it just depends on what you're after. Okay, you go through here, publish for free. They've got all the information. Create your book. Everything you could possibly need. Print book. Start a print book. Then you would choose the size. Now unfortunately, most of them do not do an A4 size. In Australia, we work mostly with, with A4 as opposed to letter. So, and you've got some choices. You've got the US letter, black and white, perfect bound paperback. But if you've got color photographs, obviously, you're going to have to go with um, a color one. Oh, here we go. Perfect bound is this binding. Oops, that binding there. Can you see that? Oops, that's that binding. Okay, so we go with perfect binding. We can go with um, full color on white. Oh, they do A4. Lulu do A4. So I would go there. But choose what you want. You could just make a small book. Full because we're going to have photographs, obviously, we're going full colour, we're going A4 because that's what I um, normally use. Um, the number of pages in my little bag book, I've got 19 so far and I've got photographs to put in, so well, I'm going to go 30. Okay, 30 is not enough. Um, let's see. You can't do a 30. Well, um, let's try a saddle stitch paperback. Aha. Uh -huh. So that is like, I'll just grab one. Sorry about that. That is 
this book that has the staples. It's got the staples down the middle. Okay, so my book is going to have. Actually, I don't even think it's going to have 30. I'm thinking five bags, another five. Let's go 26. So that is going to cost me $6.66 to make this book. So we'll go make this book. So you'd fill everything in um, in whatever in all these <coughs> excuse me all these pages. <coughs> well, I haven't decided on what I'm going to call my book, so um, I'm just going to put little little toes. Yep, little totes. My name, and I think because it's only a small book, I can only sell this on Lulu Marketplace. In a minute, I'll just make it available only to me. This you can change later if you decide to sell. Okay, so we'll save and continue. Now here it tells you the size that your book must be. You can download a template or let Lulu do the formatting for you with their professional services. It costs. Um, Make sure you're using one of the file formats they support. Um, so it's best to change to convert your file to PDF, and you need to embed your fonts. So they've got information here. Find out more about creating your PDF. If your file is larger than 300 megabytes use FTP to upload. Again, you can learn from them. And then you choose your file from your computer, which I won't at the minute because I haven't... Oh, well, let's... Why not? Let's go. Let's do it. So I'm going to go to print I'm going to go to do PDF 9, which is my PDF program, and I press print. Now something will pop up shortly. Okay, this has popped up. It's, it's already selected the file, which is fine. Medium, don't put smallest file because any color will not be there. So medium is quick, reasonably quick for them. Best quality is very slow, and you don't really need that. Check, embed all fonts used. This is in case you've used a, a um, font that they don't have. It'll be embedded in the file so they can use it. And just check everything else there. Click OK. It's now printing my document. But it's putting it into converting it to PDF. It 
should come up shortly. My computer's just a little bit slow, it's got that much crap on it, seriously. Even though I've got an external drive. Okay, there we go. We'll just make this a bit smaller so we can see it better. you wouldn't do this until you've completely finished your book. Okay now let's go back to here. Let's choose a file to upload. I don't know where I saved it to. I think. Um. Oh my word. Maybe it's in downloads. Where did you put it? what I called it. Ouch. <laughs> We're getting there. We are getting there. say it was little totes. Okay, let me just Okay. I actually paused you for a tick. And I found it and I clicked on it. Now I'm going to click on Upload. shouldn't take too long because it's only a, a small book and it's um, it's not fully finished and you can do that you can as long as you don't publish it you can keep it up there um, you know do practice runs and then when you've finished it properly then re-upload it So we've got about three megabytes to go, so it's not, not going to be long. Any tick? Okay, there it is. 
is a little bag book make a print ready file Okay, they tell you here. Yeah, they've told me they've de um, detected low resolution images on my file, page ten. So I will go to my book and I will look at page ten. It's obviously that one. So I will take this back to the drawing board and I will turn it into three hundred DPI and reinstall it. I will resave it. I will do the PDF again and then upload the new file. Okay, you can also download it back to yourself. Um, save and continue and then you can click on cover and upload to cover. Okay. It's really quite easy. Just follow these simple steps they give you. Okay, now let me show you Dollar Graphics Depot. I've got all sorts of um, things. Let's have a look at art and painting. Hmm. School. You click on one. And you get a um, a larger image, and you can add to cart, and they're normally a dollar, and they will tell you exactly what's in it, and you usually get the PNG, which is a transparent, and you get the JPEG formats for use in your graphics program. Absolutely brilliant. You can go via um, author, let's see, artist credits, read everything with regards to all of these and then you'll be safe. Cutting files, what is that? Okay, that's that one. Let's bring you back down to my desk for a sec. Okay. Now getting back to actually writing your book Bear in mind firstly that any expensive tools or machines you use in the making of your crafts may not be available to the reader of your book. So don't use them. Use an alternative or suggest alternatives. Machines like Sizzix cutters, which you know can cost hundreds of dollars and dies knitting machine, large guillotine, anything that costs more than the average beginner crafter is not prepared to pay are a no-no really. You've got to be um, in, their, in their head, in their space, telling them that they can do it without hundreds of dollars of outlay. 
Using tools that are readily available and reasonably inexpensive will be well received by your readers. Okay, you can give them a list of inexpensive tools such as utility knife, paper cutter, scoreboard, etc. Brand names and websites or shops where they might be found. Do not list prices as they always change. Once you've decided which craft you want to go with, design your first item. Make sketches and notes in a notebook. List all supplies and quantities and measurements. List the tools used, e.g. hot glue gun, self-healing cutting mat, etc. Start with preparation, if any. Okay, I'm just going to have a look at one of my patterns. here for a set. And this one here, my little pumpkin, you can see underneath her photograph, I've got preparation. In this particular thing, I've got join any pattern pieces as necessary, then the cutting out, etc. Now over here, I've got the materials list. Of course you don't, I've got mine in, in two columns. You can see column one, column two. Let's just bring that down so you can see it better. My program allows me to do that. But you can do it all in one like I've done the bag book. Use your own imagination when you're designing or use a template from the publisher. Okay. Um, if anyone has to trace off a pattern from the book, put that in preparation. And if your fabric needs to be pressed first for quilting, etc., or do you need to prepare your area of work, if the project is a messy one with paper or, or plastic, etc. Anything really that needs to be done before beginning the first step of actually creating the project. Step one, this obviously is the first thing a reader needs to do to begin this project. For instance, if you're making a mini album, how do you yourself start? Write it down in your notebook, step by step, as you actually make the project. If you wait until the project is finished before writing out the instructions, I can almost guarantee you will miss something. I've done it. And your reader may not understand what's missing. So write, do, write, do until the project is finished and you have pages of full and comprehensive instructions. Then transfer your instructions into your prepared template. Okay, um, the photographing, my latest book, is my Calico Bears book. And you can see I chose an area in the garden. There's the graphics I have purchased. You've got to admit, they add a certain something to the book. They just add oomph, something really, really special. Okay, you can see the, the shrub in the background, which is rather pretty. It, just, it blends into the background so that the doll pops out. Again, same bush in the background. I've done for all of them. I've also added a little graphic on the, um, the image. Another little graphic on the image there. Same thing. It really makes the, the dolls pop out.
this one. I have actually given this beautiful teddy bear away so I couldn't do a new photograph of him but I was quite happy with the last one. Look at his nose, he's just gorgeous. I was quite happy with this. You can put a couple of small accent things in your photo but don't take away from the actual product that you're teaching. That one's cool. So bear in mind that your actual product must pop out of your picture. This one's okay with the tree in the background. It's fairly neutral. This one's okay as well. The bench in the background with it. I should have moved the statue. That is the only thing. I should have moved that. But it's okay. It turned out okay. She pops. She does pop out. This one. Again, I've either I think I've sold all those. I've sold all those. And that was the only photograph I had. I didn't have time to make them again, so I had to use this photograph. Now this is not a great photo. It certainly shows the doll, the teddy bears, but I've got too much colour in the background. This would have been better with just maybe a um, calico or a canvas hessian or something in the back of them. But I've got two different patchwork things, one a crochet and one a, an actual fabric, so there's too many colours. So this is actually a no-no. This one is pretty good. He's just standing in front of a pot plant on a porch. That's good. Nothing detracts from him. Again, the bears with that background. Okay. Let's see if I can show you some more photographs of do's and don'ts. Okay, that's a don't. I was happy with it at the time, but looking back, no, because Pumpkin Pete, he doesn't pop out. That vase shouldn't have been there. Or perhaps it should have been on the other side, but not behind him. So be careful when you're photographing. Um, Priscilla, that one's okay, but I should have removed the photograph there. I should have removed several things that were behind Libby. That one's fine. It's a neutral background. That one's fine. And that one is fine too. Sam's farm. Now they they are okay. Okay, because there's just flowers in the background and you can still see what you need to see. I know there's a fair bit happening in the background of this one, but she's cool. The birdhouse just behind her does not detract from her, neither do the plants. Plenty this too much going on behind plenty. Blinds, kitchen bench, chair. So that's not the greatest photo. 
it turned out the best of, of what I had at the time um, the camera I had at the time but that's not the best situation for it pumpkin was outside not bad photo nothing detracts from her um, tickety boo again outside in the garden nothing detracts from her and little shepherd he's got a, a bird house and he's sitting on a, a pot that's a that's quite a good photo he's not just stark sitting there there are some things around him but they're not taking away from him so bear that in mind when you're actually photographing um, your products use some nice um, pieces relevant to to your product obviously but nothing that is going to pop out before they actually see the actual project you're trying to teach well I think I've I've done about all I can say on that um, also if if you find that even drawing diagrams even by hand is not for you you can do it by um, photographs you can add lots of small photographs of certain sections for instance if you're making a greeting card show um, a photograph of how they would cut the card for instance um, how they would glue or use um, tape etc anything that you want to describe but but you you can't do the diagram take the photograph okay um, what I do for my photographs is I've got I don't have a great camera so my Sang, Samsung tablet takes the best photos of all the electronic gadgets that I've got to hand okay if anybody has got any queries on anything with regards to publishing please please just drop me a message down below and I'll get back to you absolutely I will get back to you so if you found this interesting please click like and please subscribe to me for more info and upcoming um, YouTubes and I will keep you updated on the publishing of the little tote book okay have a great day have a great week lots of love from me